Yeah, but uh, just to be clear, this is a two-year-old model. They're going to be releasing the new one, a GPT-4, which will. Underline. When is that happening? Where, uh, where can I hide? <laughs> Do I need to like hide in a mountain, or would you go to an island? Uh, island probably you can't better, run right? Away. <gasps> you got to get on a. Shit. You got to get on a on a on a rocket. Mm. No, I, I, and they're cautiously, uh, they're like cautioning people that. This is not going to be like superhuman level intelligence. Like this is this is slow progress. Like GPT four right. is not like all of this is interesting discoveries because Chat GPT is not fundamentally different than the thing we had. There's a few tricks that tuned it to human to to the, to the thing that humans expect, which makes it super impressive to human. But the knowledge and the, and the intelligence was already there. So it's there's a lot of tr tricks here along the way as we discover how to create intelligent systems. Google is desperately working on this. Uh, obviously, Microsoft is the one that's investing in open AI different companies are uh, investing in this and open source versions are popping up so we're, mm. we're going to have all of that the, the reason Google is freaking out I don't think there's justification for this is that it might replace search so a lot of the questions you Google uh, is like questions about oh, that makes sense. how something works how and basically chat GPT can replace knowledge so like like basic questions about answers and uh, uh, sorry questions about basic facts of the world and events and all that kind of stuff uh, and then if you integrate search into that you know Google would be worried because you might be able to discover the right web page for this kind of piece of knowledge because you can trace it back to the data on which it was trained on to attain that kind of knowledge so like there Google makes a lot of money from search mm. from ads on search I would imagine and so this is a threat for the first time in a long time and a to, threat where it seems like you probably do it better than Google can do it yeah yeah well of now, course I Google must question. do it um chat GPT right what if they come up with voice GPT what if they come up with a thing we just have it relax and it feels weird at first yeah you just let it talk for you yeah let it manipulate oh. your vocal cords and let it say things for you it'll say the right things yeah. imagine yeah. you're on a date and you're like god i just get social anxiety when i'm around women yeah i don't know what to do you know like don't worry install voice gpt smooth operator <laughs> And then you control it. Let it talk for you. With high-level human language. I mean, yeah. th this is going to replace email. That definitely replaces uh, legal contracts or basic legal contracts. And then it starts to replace email. So instead, I'll, I'll write you an email. Uh, the thing I'll write is like, say something nice to Joe showing that I still care. <laughs> and then it will generate an email saying, yeah. hey, hey, bro. Like, well, it'll use the right language <laughs> to communicate that to you. Right? Yeah. It's like, and so I'll just write a few words and it'll write a long thing. Like, or it might be like dear joseph or something yeah. like uh, uh that it it adds that filler stuff like chat gpt is really good at creating the filler that we all do that's why it can replace your english essay in high school because most of english essays are filler yeah they're not actually saying anything interesting and on a date too most things is filler except like the human emotions that we feel the like the dance of human emotions but maybe like, that's how we'll get to give up on being human is that it becomes so muddied through things like chat gpt 7.0 and AI and that we're just like who knows what the fuck it means to be a person anyway no but like it's maybe, all muddied maybe it'll help us discover the essence of what it means to be a human why why we're special maybe it's consciousness the ability to deeply experience the thing that's what I love about you you're so optimistic okay. <laughs> you, you're always looking at the bright side you, I'm you like, want we're it all doomed. to burn we're down fucking, I'm yeah. like we're doomed yeah we're doomed say we're doomed say yeah, it this should be the, this should be the day of your next special uh, I, I think it's it, a little too on the nose th there's something that there th th this is the cynicism I don't know why people love to watch a thing burn down it's not that they like to watch a thing burn down they just want to be right about it gonna fail the fact that it's gonna fail yeah they, they want to be right but they, why don't you want to be right about a thing being awesome which it usually is because we like to find danger we like to, oh that's gonna be a problem yeah that's gonna be a problem I mean some people like to find like the good and stuff and some people like to say this is going to turn out okay i know how this is going to work this is all going to work out right but if you were really paying attention could you really be confidently stating that this is all going to work out uh not confidently but more likely than not yes and so, the people that are actually building stuff so here's here's a dark reality of this public discourse we're operating in the people that say it's all going to burn down and you you've had a few guests i'm not touching russia ukraine <laughs> today just 
get, well, I don't think I actually talked about my, my trip to Ukraine. It's just interesting. The uh, people that are cynical and say that everything is burning down are somehow, just by that statement, seen as more intelligent. I've just observed this. Right. It's weird. Yeah, like, it is weird. The reality is the people that are building this stuff are usually optimistic. Now, you could say they're too optimistic, but like if you actually want to build a better world, you're usually going to be more optimistic. The people that are considered intelligent are the ones that are going to be a little more cynical. I think there's a balance there that's kind of nice because it's like you need the critic. It's, uh, yeah. it's not the critic that counts, but you need the critic in order for the people not to run away with the, into the bad direction. Well, that was the, I mean, how many things when they first were invented were dismissed by smart people? Like yeah. the personal computer. Like when the personal computer was invented, everyone's was like, what the fuck are you going to do with that? Yeah. All the people that thought they were smart. Dude, when podcasts first started, people yeah. were like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, and people that were like at the, like Howard Stern mocked them. Yeah. He's the top of the food chain when it comes to broadcasting. They're like, what the fuck is this? All these smart people, but they were wrong. They're, and I think that applies to so many things. I think right now the sky is the limit and all bets are off when it comes to what AI and what technology is going to bring to human. And any ideas that we have that this will work out well or not well is just guessing. But you're right that the people that like to think they're smart, they move towards, oh, we're fucked. We're yeah. fucked, bro. Yeah, that's more fun for whatever reason. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> so may maybe once AI does all the actual work, we're going to descend into just talking shit nonstop. Because we monkeys, descendants of apes, enjoy talking shit. How far do you think we are away from Neuralink? Well, the Neuralink is, no, I think we're far away. Be, Decades? The, uh, well, no, Neuralink in humans. Yeah. Helping humans recover some capability. We're like five years away. If you ask Elon, it's probably like two years away. But yeah, it's it's within within a decade. There'll be a lot of incredible like regained capabilities. Regained sight, I think, is probably more than ten years. Like being able to see for wow. when you could never see. That's gonna be amazing. But in terms of expanded capability, I just there's it's gonna be a while because we're gonna get so much amazing expanded capability in our in our devices that we just hold and the bandwidth mm. is already pretty high in terms of uh, communicating awesomeness to us so mm. i don't i don't need i don't see the obvious um need for like that extremely high bandwidth that Neuralink would provide like just injecting ai into our brain mm. i think it's probably like 50 years away from ai in our brain be, be, basically being able to inject chat gpt knowledge into our brain directly so it's mm. part of the thought process that's at least 50 because here's the thing it's like uh as to that uh commentary from before like the evolution has built a really complicated biological mechanism there that w it's really hard to like understand how the brain works without understanding how it all comes from a single embryo there's this whole uh computation system that builds up a human being from a single strand of dna so like to understand how the like you can't just like um monkey with that yeah you can't monkey with the result of it you can right. monkey with the development part so you have to understand the embryo uh, embryogenesis or whatever the the process of building from a the uh, the actual uh, the, how the programming maps to the function throughout the entire pro process because i think most of the magic honestly happens first of all probably in the womb and maybe in the first year of life that's where all the cool shit happens mm. like messing with the already the adult the baked cake is not it's too difficult but so of course through simulation like uh alpha full a lot of stuff deep mind is doing the simulation will probably be able to understand some of these complicated biological processes like protein folding and more but we're really far away from that 